principles that sufficient information exists with, with which to understand, evaluate, and build upon a prior work if a third party can replicate the results without any additional information from the author. So what, it would, be, what would be sufficient information? Uh, well, before we saw the pyra pyramid, and this is another view of the pyramid that maybe it's easier to see if I put this, uh, these colors. So uh, we talk, usually what we make public to, to the world are the blogs in red, the research products, right, the publications, presentations, etc., visualizations of the data. But everything else is what is necessary to actually replicate the results, to verify the, uh, the, the claims, um, well, verify the claims that are, are in the publications. So uh, we, need, we need to make sure that, or, or le well, to uh, be able to share as much of all that, they, uh, that what we call, what we, well, I'm marking yellow, and, and the blues that would be all the, the context, the documentation, the, the conditions, um, the, the environment, the, the notes taken about the experiment, et cetera. So in a similar way that we were, well, we said before also, if, if we just, if we would say that we share um, just uh, some of the information, the, the data, well, the products or the, some part of the scholarly work, but not the entire data set and documentation that goes with the data set, uh, if, we, if we've tried to replicate that now, we probably, is, we might be able to replicate it if we can, ask, if we can uh, contact the author and get enough information of course, as time goes by and we think of 50 years from now, either the author is not around or if he's around, probably will not remember anything. <laughs> maybe, maybe even 10 years from now, will not remember anything. So the more information, again, reiterating the point that was, done, it was said before, but even in the case that you share all the information, it's difficult to replicate. So the more we, we um, provide that, the documentation around the data set, uh, uh, the more we can make sure that we will be able to verify the results. So th things that can happen, we don't share. Uh, this was an unfortunate case that uh, many of you know that was published in the New York Times a year ago about a research, uh, a psychologist uh, in the Netherlands that had uh, falsified the data. Uh, it was found in this case, uh, Fortunately, but uh, and, and, and as part of finding actually that, uh, that that had happened, then there were several studies done and showed that uh, one of the surveys, the 2,000 American psychologists, uh, well, uh, that, well, claimed that uh, or knowledge that uh, seven, at least 70 percent of the 2,000 acknowledged that they had not uh, shared all the data. Or they they removed some parts of it to make sure that the results uh, that they reported were consistent. And also there was a, an analysis of 49 studies uh, that found that uh, the, the scientists that were more reluctant to share data actually were more likely to then find that the, that the results didn't correspond to, the, to the, the actual data. So it didn't match the actual data. So in, the, in, this, uh, uh, in this article, they say, well, we have the technology. It's, it's time to use it. So uh, I, I'm not sure what technology they refer to, but I will talk about one a platform that, uh, that helps to, uh, to solve that problem. So uh, another, another article, on the other hand, that shows that if we share data, it might be possible to or oh, it might induce more the, um, citations about your, your study. In this case, there were, well, they, uh, this paper in PLOS looked at uh, about 85 clinical publications on clinical trials and found that the, the, uh, the publications that had data, that they were, where they were sharing the data, uh, they were 70% more frequently cited than the other publications. So let's talk now about the Dataverse Network. Well, I, the, the Dataverse Network is this open source application to help share research data. 
and it takes care of the long-term preservation and good archival practices, but at the same time, it provides the recognition for the research and gives credit for the data. So how does it do that? Well, first, uh, before I go into the details, at Harvard, we, we host an, uh, a Dataverse Network for Social Science it has about seven, more than 700,000 data, data files. Uh, it, a, any so, uh, researcher in the world can deposit data uh, in social science. And just from this year, just starting now, actually, we have the Dataverse, a Dataverse network on an astronomy, uh, for astronomy data. And I believe that in other fields, the, the challenges that uh, we've been finding and we've been learning from uh, with our platform are similar. So we have the incentive to share the, how we define, what we define as a unit of data citation, what does it mean sufficient metadata, sufficient documentation, uh, how do we deal with formats and software that will become obsolete over time, uh, how do we make sure that the data is discoverable? Um, and the fact that there is increasing amounts and sizes of data all the time. So uh, in terms of incentive, um, we provide a, a platform that al allows you to create a data, a data archive or virtual data archive that is just for an individual researcher or for a research project that can be branded or embedded in your website and basically uh, own the data or you're able to manage the data, but the, the actual data sets are, are stored and backed up in a central repository. Uh, and more within, well, giving credit to the researchers, the Dataverse generates automatically a data citation, and that data citation includes, well, first the information, well, the, the author, Information, the year that it was deposited or well published, uh, the title, but more importantly, it, it includes a persistent URL uh, based on a handle. Handle it's similar, well, uh, similar to the, uh, like DOIs, and, and well, DOIs are actually based on handles. Uh, and then it also produces a numerical fingerprint, which is a, a checksum or hash based on the, the, the content of the data set. So it's independent of the format. We, what uh, we do is that we convert the, uh, if we recognize the, uh, the data file format, we convert it into a canonical format, a standardized archival format, basically. We apply the checksum to that and, and give that numerical fing fingerprint. So over time, we can verify that the data set, or the, the values of the data have not changed. Uh, that uh, that um, data citation standard was published by Michael Alm and, and Gary Keane in 2007, and we've been using since then. So how does it work? Uh, the, the software the, or the application uh, is a centralized repository that you can host in your institution or, or we host at Harvard, again, for social science data all over the world. Uh, Within that, uh, that repository, you can create as many data verses as you want, and each one is its own virtual archive that is managed by the data owner or by the research group with its own branding. And within a dataverse, you have studies or collections of studies. Uh, and the studies uh, are self-curated by entering, making it easy to enter metadata about, that describes the data set plus uh, loading data files and any other documentation files, or scripts, and all the other, all the other file, or, or, well, boxes that had there that were the contents of the, of the data set and uh, the additional complementary files. So it also supports data versioning. Um, when you create a study and enter the metadata and upload the data files and complementary files, then it goes in through a review process. Uh, we, we provide different roles, uh, the administrator of the, the dataverse, or uh, uh, might be the data owner, or contributors, or curators. And a contributor might create the study, but there, might be, uh, there would be a curator that will review it. 
um, if you, well, there is a lot of configuration, so you can make that available or not, depending on what you want. But, uh, but then you create a, you publish a version, so you publish your data uh, page with the data sets. And when you, pro you publish that version, you get a data citation that includes the, the version number. And then if you do any edits or you do any additional analysis or cleanup of the data, data set, uh, you would uh, update the study, review it again, and publish the new version. Now you have a new data citation, well, a data citation that has the same handle. If you change the data file, it should be a new UNF because a numerical fingerprint has changed if the data file is different, if the contents of the data file are different. Uh, but you can still reference the old version, and that's obviously an a very important thing for good archival practices because as well as we were talking before and camera mentioned too, uh, you, you don't you want to make sure that you if you cite it you reference it in your publication you would al you will always be able to access it so sharing data again it's not about passing sending the data from one researcher to another but it's to make sure, making sure that uh, once you've referenced it it will be accessible in perpetuity and so we keep all these versions so you, you can go back to the original data set that the, the publication or the, the results or the claims used. Uh, but on the other hand, you can, you can have new versions of that data set. Uh, we, we're also working with publication repositories and journal systems to link data with, um, with publication. In this case, the astrophysical uh, well, journal repository or data, uh, services has a, when, it, when you find a publication, you can see uh, a link now next to it that it has, has the archival data. Uh, when you click there, you find the, all the data sets or the studies that are part of that, uh, well, that are used in that publication. And it goes to a Dataverse page for that study with all the files. Uh, also, let me mention, in addition to working with the astrophysical group, we're working with the open journal system, the OJS, to integrate uh, the journal, journals, um, well, any journal that uses OJS, the system, in, integrate that with the Dataverse network. So, as you were asking before, when, when the author deposit, uh, submits a paper, now they cannot have, upload an app in supplementary, uh, a supplementary files. What it will happen is that it will go, they will be able to uh, upload, well, deposit the data and it will get deposited directly to a Dataverse network, so a central repository that is independent of the journal system. Um, the, so, in a, well, the, the centralized re repository or the, the, the actual application, the, that hosts all the data verses, provides uh, also all these other functionality to make sure that the data is duplicated in multiple locations. And this is using the lots of copies, keeps that safe, the logs, in order to do that. It also helps reformatting, well, it, it reformats automatically uh, data files that recognizes as to uh, an archival format. Um, it extracts the metadata from those files, so the metadata is searchable, it's indexed, it's all indexed, and then becomes uh, searchable together with all the descriptive metadata that the author enters. Um, it exports all, I mean, all the metadata is stored in a relational database, but it exports it into uh, XML uh, files following standards like the Dublin Core or the Data Documenta Documentation Initiative Schema, the DDI. And it also supports OAI PMH for, uh, so to be able to harvest metadata from one Dataverse network to another or from one, any other system that supports OAI to another. So it's searchable across systems and, and it supports web services and APIs. So uh, this for, if it's interested in the, in the architecture, it uses uh, Java E6 and and it has a relational database. It's all, again, open source, and the files are stored in a file system. We use R for additional data analysis, 
uh, and be able to process the data as it gets ingested. And we use our surf for that. So, and that's it for my talk. And it's open to questions and suggestions. Questions? What needed to be changed when going from uh, data verses that were specialized for sociology information to um, something like astrophysics and other scientific information? Yes, so, you still can hear? Yeah, yeah so, so uh, as we did with astronomy, you could use it as it is for as a file storage plus the metadata. There is some, some of the metadata is very, uh, high-level description of a, of a data set, so it would apply to any field. And then we have additional custom fields that one could configure for your, for your, for, yeah, your community. Um, uh, if, if you want to add a value like we've done for social science data set, you, uh, you could take, uh, we did with, for example, SPSS as data files or other files used for, uh, from a statistical packages that are commonly is in social science, um, uh, we, we convert them into other file formats, like <coughs> the metadata, could do that for some of the, the files more commonly used for, for, for imaging, and so and be able to uh, extract information from the header, for example, and provide that automatically as a, as a searchable terms. But that, so that would be the, that's what we're doing for astronomy. We're taking FITS files that are the most common well, data, data files used in astronomy and be able to ingest them the same way that we do for social science data sets. But they're they using it as it is now also just as a, uh, as a way to group data files that are part of the same publication or the same claim. Is that, this is the answer. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, with this centralized repository model, how well do you think that's going to scale to the sort of very large image data, that large scale image data that lots of us deal with? So we're very interested in having a centralized architecture, at least for annotation for the, for the work that we do, but it's not really practical for us to, to be hosting petabytes of, I mean, but there's no way we would get the funding to host petabytes of data centrally. To uh, the, the funding, are you asking? Well, the, the no, just the practicality of a centralized model, I guess, is, is going to depend very much on, on the size of the data sets. So with social yeah. science data sets, which are basically statistical. Yeah. They are maximum two gigabytes per file, although within a study you can have as many files as you want. Right. So but, but, I, yeah. we were looking into that too, in part for astronomy, but also because we're talking uh, with other groups at Harvard for larger data sets. Uh, I think right part of the architecture would change, and, uh, but, uh, but the, the central repository or least a federated system with multiple repositories, which is supported by the, by the architecture of the data person network would still work. I, I mean, maybe not through an HTTP upload also, but uh, we're looking at a, um, ways to, the, well, uh, have the larger data sets in the central repository and be able to get first a slow resolution file. Uh, I, I guess the within, within what, what we're doing, the only way that could work if there was some big centralized agreement to fund some central repository, which doesn't seem very likely at the moment. So. Um, there's an elephant not in the room and I, I wonder if uh, we should ask uh, what we could learn from it. I, um, I don't think anyone from Google is attending, and perhaps there's no one from Nature here today, although there was yesterday. Uh, we've been talking mostly about how to make things work and accessible in, in, in an open sense. And the constraints that uh, Google has and the constraints that Nature has are slightly different, and also the resources might be a little bit different. And so I'm just wondering if, there, if there's any generic, I, I'm, I'm new to INCF and don't know uh, where it hurts and scalability or transformation between different types of data sets and so forth, but I, is this a 
reasonable or simply a naive question to see what we could learn by other, uh, by the other contexts of other data availability systems. Maybe that's a more general. More general <laughs> question. Well, let's have the panel uh, take a shot at it. Yeah, Cameron. So there are certain.